Welcome to Drive the DAF. Clear, structured explanation of the daily DAF in 20 minutes. You can even follow in the car. Shaches Erevin Daf Lamed Gimel is discussing the Allah of an Erev Tchumen that is placed in a tree. As we have learned, an Erev Tchumen is a parcel of food that you set up in a place that makes that area your permanent residence for Shabbos and therefore becomes the center of your Tchum. The question is what happens when the Arabs in the tree? And we are going to, we're working off a Mishnah we saw in the middle of Daflam and Bays, and we're going to have a Brisa coming up which is very similar and adds a few halachas. So we're trying to figure out what the different zones here and how it works. The issue is that you have to be able to access your Arab in order for it to work as an Arab on Shabbos. You have to be able to get to it. Or at least at the moment that Shabbos begins, you have to be able to get to it. That way, when the Erev is taking effect at the beginning moment of Shabbos, you can reach it. Now, if you're in one Rishos and the Erev is in a different Rishos, you can't take the Erev. That would be carrying from Rishos to Rishos. So, the Gemara is trying to figure out what the Rishos is over here. So, the zones, the Gemara says, are as follows. The, we are referring to, and this is clear, where the bottom ten tefachim of this area is Rishos Arabim. The tree that this Erev is in is planted in Rishos Arabim. Everything is a Rishos Arabim. The bottom ten Tachem is a Rishos Harabim. The halacha is that Rishos Harabim extends only up to 10 Tachem height. Above 10 Tachem is not called Rishos Harabim anymore. That's Rishos Hayachad. So that's the lay of the land. Now, the Mishnah says that if your Erev is above 10 Tachem, so it's no good because it's in Rishos Hayachad. Or the reason seems to be because it's in a Rishos Hayachad. You are on the ground. So you're in Rishos Harabim. You can't get to the Erev. It's no good. Gemara, however, asks that the place where you're planning on spending Shabbos gets a honorary status of a Rishos HaYachid. So, you're also in Rishos HaYachid. So why can't you take the Erev from its Rishos HaYachid to you? It's in Rishos HaYachid because it's above 10 Tfachim. You're in Rishos HaYachid because the place you're planning on spending Shabbos, within a 4 Amma circle, you get an honorary Rishos HaYachid. So what's the problem? So Gemara says, simple. You're at the trunk of the tree. The Erev is all the way out on a branch, so it's outside your Foramas. So you can't move it from where from its Rishos HaYachid to your Rishos HaYachid. It's got to pass through Rishos HaYachid in between, because it's not in your Foramas. The Gemara asks that the language of the Mishnah is off. The branch is, is extending far out. So, if your Erev is above Ten Tvachim, then you have a problem because it's in Rishos HaYachid. If it's below 10 Tvachim, you don't have a problem because it's in Rosh Hashanah and you're also technically in Rosh Hashanah. Uh, even though you're in an honorary Rosh Hashanah, you're technically in Rosh Hashanah, so that wouldn't be an issue. But that means that it's the the case that it's permitted and the case that it's forbidden are differentiated from each other not by where the Erev is along the branch. They're differentiated from each other by how high the branch is. So if so, you should talk about where the Erev and its branch are higher than Ten Tvachim or lower than Ten Tvachim. The language that's used is not Gavaya and Namuch, high and low. The language that's used is Lamaila Lamata. Lamaila usually means along the branch or closer in, not so far along the branch. That sounds like we're talking about one branch, and the question is how far out are you from the trunk? That's not the difference. When we say above Ten Tvachim and below Ten Tvachim, we should say above and below. Because the question is, where is it? Is it above or below? It's not about is it far out or close in. So the verse says, no, we're referring to where the branch is angled. It grows out of the tree. Front, it's attached to the tree below Ten Tvachim, and then it grows upwards. So along, as you're going farther out from the tree, it's getting higher. That's why we say up. That's why we say if it is above Ten Tvachim and below, which means further out or closer in. Okay. The verse says, now we have another problem over here, though. And that's that you should be able to bring the Erev from where it is all the way out on the branch, along the branch, into your honorary Rosh Hashayachim. Why should you be allowed to do that? Because an object that's in a Rosh Harabim is a Carmelis. It can't be used by Rosh Harabim. It's in the way. People don't walk around on an object in Rosh Harabim. So the branch that's in Rosh Harabim, as it's passing through the Rosh Harabim, it's extending downward as it drops below 10 Tvachim high. So it's out of Rosh Hashayachim. And it's coming towards your residence at the trunk of the tree, which is your honorary Rishos Yachid, that branch is a Carmelis. And we had seen earlier that Rebbe holds 
that you're allowed to set up an Erev in a place where it's an Iser der Abbanon to access it and to take it on a Shabbos. Why? Because the Erev only takes effect during Banish Mashas. During Banish Mashas, Isur der Abbanon are not prohibited. And therefore, if it's an Iser der Abbanon, it's not a problem. Now, to carry the thing along the branch, the food along the branch from its Rishos HaYachid, because it's above 10, along the branch, which is a Carmelist, into your honorary Rishos HaYachid would be going from Rishos HaYachid to Carmelist to Rishos HaYachid. That's an Isidur Abbanon. You should be allowed to do that. So we're just, okay, we're talking about a case where this particular branch was a Rishos HaRabim. Why would a branch be a Rishos HaRabim ever? The Rabim can't use it. They can't walk on it. Well, referring to where it's at a nice convenient height and size that people use it to adjust their packages all the time. So it really does serve the Rabbim, and therefore it's Rishos Rabbim. Therefore there's no way to get the air from being out on the branch towards your Rishos HaYachid, your personal Rishos HaYachid, without passing through Rishos Rabbim at some point along the way. Okay. The other thing we want to know where we see this uh, Halacha of Rebbe that uh, you're allowed to set up an Erev in a place where you have to violate an Eser Darabonon to get to it because it's only Ben Hashmashos when it takes effect and Ben Hashmashos you're allowed to do an Eser Darabonon. And the Gemara has noted before that the Chachamim argue on this Halacha Rebbe. So where do we see this? So the Gemara brings a Brisa which is very similar to our Mishnah and that's going to be where we're going to see this Halacha. The Brisa uh, begins with Rebbe's Shita and it says Halacha very similar to the Mishnah we've seen before. It says that if you have an Erev on a tree and the Erev is above 10 Tvachim, it's no good. It doesn't count because you cannot get to it. You cannot take it. It's in a different Rishos than you. If, however, it is below 10 Tvachim, but still higher than 3 Tvachim, between 3 and 10, so that area, the Erev is good, but you're not allowed to take it on Shabbos. Now here, the clear reason is, the reason why it's good is because Bein HaShemash, it was only in Eser Darban to get to it. It's on a branch, and it's below Tent Fachim. That's a Carmelus. This is not going with the adjustment we made before that the Rabbim use it. It's in a Carmelus. And therefore, you're allowed to get to it. And um, you're, Midaraisa, you're allowed to take it. Benish Masha, that's not a problem. And therefore, Benish Masha, when the Erev went into effect, you were able to take it. However, the rest of Shabbos, now it's in a Carmelus. You're not allowed to take it now because it's still an Isser Darbanon to take it from the Carmelist to where you are. If, however, it's below three Tvachim, says Rebbe, then is no problem. Anything below three Tvachim is considered to be lying on the ground, and therefore it's not in a Carmelist, it's all in Rosh Hashanah. You're allowed to access it, everything's fine. Now, Rebbe has another halacha. Rebbe says that in the case where it's above ten Tvachim, we said that the Erev is no good. If it's in a basket, then it's fine. Uh, it's in a basket hanging from the tree or stuck on the side of the trunk. The Gemara will explain that. Now, the now the Brisa ends off, and it says that now the Chachamim argue. The Chachamim say that as long as the Arab is in a place that you can't get to it, you're not legally allowed to retrieve it, so it doesn't count as an Arab either. Now, what case is he arguing on? Rebbe said a couple of halachas. What's he arguing on? He's not arguing on the case of the basket, because that would be uh, machlaik is about using the sides of a tree, placing something and something stuck on a tree. That's a whole machlaik which we've seen in Masech Shabbos, and we didn't quote this machlaik is Rebbe the Chavonah as having anything to do with that, so that's not what this is about. So they must be arguing on the case of the air of being on the tree itself, between three Tvachim and ten Tvachim. That's an Akramas. We had said that Rebbe allows you to count the air of the air is good because it's only an Eser Darbanon to get to it, and therefore Benish Mashiach is not a problem. But the rest of Shabbos you can because it's an Eser Darbanon. On that, the Chachamim argue, and they say, no, even Benish Mashiach, there's no heter to do an Eser Darbanon, and therefore you're not able to retrieve it, even Benish Mashiach, and therefore the air is no good at all. Okay, now that's the proof of that. Now the Gemara wants to analyze Rebbe's Halacha over here a little bit more deeply. So, we had seen that if the Erev is on the branch above Ten Tvachim, it's not a good Erev because it's in Rosh Hashanah, you're in Rosh Hashanah, you can't get to it. If it is in a basket, then it is good. So, much says, I don't understand this. Why should it be different if it's a basket or not? It's above Ten Tvachim. Uh, what's happening over here? If the branch is four Tvachim wide, then it's a regular Rosh Hashanah, what does the basket help? And if you're going to tell me that the branch is too thin, it's less than four tochem wide, 
and therefore it's on what's called a makam patur. Yeah, even though it's above ten tefachim from the ground, but it's not on a four tefach wide surface, and therefore it's called a makam patur. So again, it has nothing to do with the basket. If it's on a branch that's narrow, so it's a makam patur, you should be allowed to take it. The air should be good. What does the basket help you over here? The basket doesn't add anything. If it's four tefachim wide, then it's no good. And if the place that it's in is less than four tefachim wide, then it is good. Why does Rabbi say if there's a basket, then it's okay? So Gemara explains that really the issue is the four tefachim. The case that Rabbi said that it's no good, you can't retrieve it, that is where the object was on a branch four tefachim wide. And uh, it's in Rosh Yachid, you're in Rosh Rabim, you can't get to it. The case where it was good is where it's less than four tefachim wide, and um, therefore you are allowed to take it. What's the point of the basket? Rebbe holds, like, in a, like a shita of Rebbe Yehuda, that you cannot set up an Erev in a uh, cheap spot. It's got to be in a hush of a makam. It has to be in a respectable place. It has to be in a place that's at least four tefachim wide. So you can't put the air on a branch that's less than four tefachim wide. That wouldn't be good. So how do you solve the problem? You said if it's in a basket, it's good. The basket has to be less than four tefachim for it to be accessible to you halachically. But you want it to be in a four tefachim wide spot. So the says, here's what you do. You have the basket stuck on the side of the tree trunk. The basket's less than four tefachim wide. But if you add the basket and the tree trunk together, it's more than four tefachim wide. Together, the basket plus the tree trunk that's on the side of it is more than four tefachim wide. The surface, the inside of the basket, is less than four tefachim wide. That's not a problem because we don't view the trunk as filling in space. We can halakhically pretend that the trunk is not there. That's fine. We'll just use the outer wall of the trunk connected to the basket, and that's considered to be a four tefachim wide area. That's an opinion of Rabbi Meir, which we've seen elsewhere in Hilchas Mezuzah. You're allowed to carve out an area. You're Halakhically, if it's filled in, it's not a problem. You could use the outer frame. So here we're going to use the basket plus the outer circumference of the tree. Together, it's more than four tefachim wide. Therefore, it is a makam chashav. Halakhically, however, as far as the halacha of setting up an Erev in a place which is not a Yachid, it's not a Rosh Yachid. It is considered smaller than a Rosh Yachid because the basket is smaller than a Rosh Yachid. And therefore, it's a makam p'tor and you're okay. Gemara now fleshes the sad. Where is this shita of Rabbi Yehuda that an Erev has to be placed in a chashav a place that's four tefachim wide? So the Gemara quotes the statement. Rabbi Yehuda says if you stick a piece of wood along a two-by-four in a Rishus Harabim, and on top of that thing you place your Erev. So the halacha is as follows. If it's if the beam is ten tefachim high and four tefachim wide, it's good. If not, it's no good. So he says, what? You're telling me it has to be ten tefachim high? That doesn't make sense. If it's less than ten tefachim high, for sure it's good. If it's less than 10 Tvachim high, it's in the same Rishos as you. You're in Rishos Arabim, and it's in Rishos Arabim. Why well, should it have to be 10 Tvachim high and be further away and be out in Rishos Ayaka? That doesn't make sense. So the Gemara says, you're right. It, it's it's not that it has to be uh, 10 Tvachim high. But if it is tachem, if it is 10 Tvachim high, then it has to be 4 Tvachim wide. Why? If it's not 10 Tvachim high, so then it's in Rishos Arabim. Rishos Arabim, you don't have to worry about how wide it is. It's considered to be in Rishos Arabim. That's a Chashiva place, that's fine. But if it's ten tefachim high, ten tefachim high, then it's not in a chash of a place, it's not in Rosh Hashanah It's got to be at least four tefachim wide. If it's four tefachim wide, then it's considered to be chash of enough, and now you're allowed to have your air of there that is considered to be a chash of spot. Okay, we now go back to the case of the basket in the tree, where we said that if it's four, if it is more than ten tefachim high, it's okay. The more is bothered by it. if it's in a basket, so then it's in uh, Rosh Yachid. So Rashi here explains that the basket itself is not Rosh Yachid, even though it has its four tochem around, because the object is in the bottom of the basket, and the bottom of the basket narrows like a boat. And therefore the problem is not that it's in a Rosh Yachid because of the basket. That's not an issue, because it's narrow at the bottom, the bottom is not four tochem wide itself. The basket itself is four tochem wide, and therefore it's called a makam chashev, but the bottom is narrower, so it's not a shashayachet. The Gemara asks differently. The Gemara asks, anytime you have a basket, 
which is above four, which is above ten tefachim, it's an automatic b'shosh yachid because they have the opinion of Rabbi Yisro Rabbi Huda, who says that you view the walls of the basket as if they extend downward, all right, good aches, and halachically then you have walls going all the way down. So you have walls ten tefachim high surrounding the basket, and then the walls are four tefachim apart. So Gemara says it's not a problem on Rabbi Yisro Rabbi Huda. Rabbi Yisro Rabbi Huda is referring to a case where the entire basket, the entire you you have an area in a basket that's for the the space between the walls. The walls are enclosing an area that's four tefachim by four tefachim. Here it's not enclosing an area that's four tefachim by four tefachim. Combined with the tree, it gets you to four tefachim by four tefachim, but the tree isn't giving you walls. The walls themselves that you want to extend the downward are not enclosing an area of four tefachim by four tefachim. The Gemara now wants to offer an alternate explanation to explain Rabbi's halacha, that if it's in a basket above ten tefachim, it's okay. Remember, we had seen that Rabbi had said in the Brisa, you have an Erev in a tree above ten tefachim, no good. If it's a, if it's hanging in a basket, even if it's above ten tefachim, it is good. The Gemara was wondering why. So we saw one explanation. Now Rabbi Yuri offers a different explanation. He says the reason is because the basket, you could theoretically tilt, and the Erev will slide downward, and come to rest in the side of the basket, which is now the bottom, and that would be below ten tefachim, and therefore it's in a caramelis. So you can get the Erev to go into a caramelis by itself, without having to do anything, without having any iser. If you don't have a basket, so then you don't have a caramelis. The caramelis is only if you have an object, like a basket, which is in the air under ten tefachim, at about nine tefachim. You're just going to take it off the tree and bring it below 10 tefachim. You just moved it from Rosh Hashayach to Rosh Hashayach. If you have a basket, theoretically, you could tilt it. It'll go to a caramelist. That'll only be an Eser Rabbanan. And like Rabbi says here, it's not a problem for an Erev if you have to do an Eser Rabbanan to get the thing. Skomorno asks, Rabbi Yerubi seems to be saying that as long as you could theoretically move the Erev, it counts. That's fine. That's good enough. I could theoretically move the Erev into a space, into the caramelist, I could tilt the basket and move it down, so I could theoretically move it there, and therefore it counts as if it's already there and it's not an issue. The Mura says, so then if that's true, so then why would Reb Yermia, how would Reb Yermia explain, how do I ever have a problem, why do I ever have to set up an Erev for Yontif? And Yontif I'm allowed to carry. Yeah? So I could theoretically take my Erev to a place where I want it to be. I could bring some food from my house, theoretically on Yontif, to a place where I want to be, and I could eat it there. I could theoretically bring it there. I shouldn't have to bring it there, since I could theoretically could, and I'm allowed to carry on Yontif, so then I I can make an air of Tchumin for Yontif just by having food in my house, and thinking that theoretically I could put it 2,000 amas away from here, and therefore that's where my air of is. It's as if I put it there. Right? Rabbi Yermia says, if, since I could put it there, it's as if I did. So if I have food in my house, it's as if I put it 2,000 amas away. That's what the Gemara asks, is at least the way Rashi understands it. The Gemara answers, you're right, theoretically you could. We don't let you because we're afraid that you're going to get confused with Shabbos. You're going to end up doing that in a case where you have Shabbos and following Yontif as opposed to Yontif. In a case where you have Shabbos first and Yontif coming right after as opposed to vice versa, and you're going to end up saying that my Arab is over there 2,000 miles away because theoretically I could carry it, but you can't carry it because it's Shabbos. And you got confused because the Shabbos is connected to Yantif. And that's why we make it zero. We don't let you do that. We say you have to actually bring it there, even for Yantif. Drive the Daf is a project of the Grand Woodland Shul and is presented by Rabbi Yitzchak Landa. Find us on YouTube or subscribe to daily emails by emailing drivethedaf at gmail.com.